What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we are looking at my Lions Big Board 1.0 for the NFL Draft. Now, hopefully, I'm covering it up right now. That is, that's, that's what I'm trying to do. This is the fourth time I've recorded this video, so keep that in mind. All right. I, I don't know why that's important, but I'm just, I'm just kind of tired of this video. Anyways, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you all the same hypeness because look, I'm standing up. It's different. All right. Look at this. We can play. We can do aerobics now. You know what I'm saying? Like, ooh, throwing the football. Anyways. Don't look over here because the big board's behind me. Look over there while I'm talking. So we're going to be doing Alliance Big Board. Now, I wasn't trying to do it because I don't know how to do it. Like, I, I really don't know what the best way is to do it. I could go by rounds, but we don't know what round players are going to be drafted, so I can't really do it by round. I can go by position, but that would be kind of weird because, like, quarterback, I would just go Burrow, Tua, Love. I mean, that's how it would be. So I don't know if you guys, or Herbert, Love. I don't know if you guys would enjoy that or not. So let me know in the comments below if you guys enjoyed it this way. But otherwise, let's just get this thing started. Now you can see the big board. This is what my big board is looking like. All right. Now, hopefully I'm pointing to the right spots. I'm not pointing to the right spots. Just, just pretend I'm pointing to the right spots. We're going to be looking at my top 20 here. And uh, I'm going to kind of just sum these up very quickly because it's been super long. The other times I've been doing it. So that's kind of why I'm trying this again. Let's just do these pretty quickly. Coming in at number one on top of the big board at the very tippity tippity top, we see Chase Young. Chase Young, the edge rusher out of Ohio State. Now, I think this one's kind of an obvious one. I think a lot of people would agree that Chase Young should be number one, right? Now, I think there are other players that are definitely like, like, like really reaching up there. Like Isaiah Simmons is almost up there with Chase Young. I mean, he's really close. Jeffrey Okuda, Derek Brown. There's a lot of good competitors, but Isaiah Simmons is really, really close. However, I went with Chase Young at number one. One, he's a great edge rusher he's the best edge rusher coming out of this draft uh obviously he's out of ohio state so that makes him a little bit worse but no i'm just kidding anyways he's a great edge rusher and that's what we need we didn't get a lot of pressure last season and getting a guy like chase young who can get pressure obviously is definitely going to help out i mean i mean if that's your biggest need and you have the best one available who had crazy production at ohio state played in a good conference Come on, man. I mean, I mean, how can you go elsewhere with that? Some people want to say this is the most talented player in the draft, excluding quarterbacks, and I think they definitely have a good case to say that. Now, I will say his last couple games of production dipped a little bit, but I would say don't be too concerned about that. I still feel like this guy's going to be an absolute monster, and I would have no problems taking him at number three. I do feel like there are, other, there are some other good prospects that we do have listed on here. However, Chase Young would help out a lot of different things. You know, maybe you're just thinking, okay, he's going to help with pressure, but that doesn't help out our secondary. But that's where you're wrong, because it does help out our secondary. Think about it. If you're getting more pressure, the secondary doesn't have to cover as long. So the secondary doesn't have to cover as long. The guys that are getting the pressure, like Chase Young, that's even better. Now, Chase Young would also help out some other players, really the front seven in general. He's going to help out Trey Flowers. He's going to take a lot of pressure on. Trey Flowers was the focus of offenses last season. Where's Flowers at? Now it's going to be, oh, snap. Here's Flowers, but where's Chase? Oh, we got those two, but where's Romeo, right? We've seen a lot of players do a lot better when there's a lot more talent, okay? You see a lot of players all of a sudden have a great year because they're focused elsewhere. Our Arik Armstead, who had an absolutely dominant season last year, well, when Nick Bosa came in, it looked a lot better. Why? Because, you know, a lot of the pressure was taken off of him, so he was able to shine. And I don't know if Chase Young would necessarily come out and get 12 sacks, but if he was drafted, he would make other players look a lot better. So I spent a lot of time there. Let's get to the next one. This is Isaiah Simmons, who comes in at number two. So Isaiah Simmons, the linebacker, slash safety, slash corner, slash running back, slash safety, slash corner, slash kicker, slash punter. I don't even know. He does everything. He plays defense. That's what he tells us. That is Isaiah Simmons. And he might be my favorite prospect in the draft, dog. I, I, he really might be. It's like, I was so sold on this guy just watching film. All right, I, I went to some watching film. I watched some gameplay, and I was like, wow, this guy's really good. I watched him in the championship game. I'm like, wow, this guy's really, really good. Then I watched him at the common, and I'm like, wow, this guy's really, really good. And, oh, man, Isaiah Simmons, I'm sorry. I need to calm down. Isaiah Simmons is such a great prospect that can literally do everything defensively. So versatile, which, you know, Matt Trisha loves that. He can cover. He can get pressure. He can tackle. He can literally do everything. He can cover tight ends and running backs on the backfield, which we've had a problem with for a long time. He said, there's got to be someone that can stop George Kittle and Travis Kelsey. Well, that's Isaiah Simmons. After running a 4-3-9, he pretty much backed everything up. And, uh, yeah. Isaiah Simmons, I would not be bad if you were a three pick. He was in number two. Now being in number three, we have Jeffrey Okuda, the cornerback of Ohio State. Him and Derek Brown are really close here. So if you want to put Derek Brown above him, definitely go for it. I'm going to go with Jeffrey Okuda. I'm going to show him a little love here. The cornerback of Ohio State. Definitely the best cornerback in the draft. Absolute lockdown. A lot of 45 pass rating. Three interceptions last season. Just a great cornerback. And honestly, he has two rules. Either he's going to replace Darius Slay or he would be the sidekick for Darius Slay. And when you think about Darius Slay, how many great cornerbacks have he, has he had across from him? Not many, right? He's had Rasheed Mathis, a little older. 
older player. He's had the Nevin Lawson's bad. He's had the T's Tabor's. Oh, dang, that definitely did not work out. But has he had a Jeffrey Okuda? No, he has not. And a Jeffrey Okuda to me, if there's any player, right? I mean, you look at rookies. You look at rookies by position. And there's always that little concern, right? He's a rookie. Okay, I don't know. He hasn't proven himself. Well, if you look at the cornerback position, I would say we don't know. We don't know how good Jeffrey Okuda is going to be. But I would say this with confidence. If there's one cornerback that I believe, the most transparent player from college to the NFL in the cornerback position, it would be Jeffrey Okuda. That's why he comes in number three. Now, hopping in number four is Derek Brown. Why is Derek Brown so high? Well, because he fills our biggest need. Defense tackle is disgusting right now. Our depth chart is so depleted, it's crazy. Look at defensive tackle for a second. We have no stacks here, so we cut him, which I'm actually okay with. So don't, don't like get concerned. I'm, I'm good with that. It was a good move. Don't worry about it. We also don't have Ashawn Robinson anymore. Well, we do, but I don't think we're going to have him anymore. And after that, we're pretty much depleted completely. Now, uh, Chris Jones got franchise tagged. It's going to cost a lot of money to go get a defense tackle in free agency. So if we don't and we fill out other needs, maybe we go get a second cornerback. Maybe we go get some old linemen. And we're looking at it in the draft for saying, wow, defense tackle is what needs an upgrade. Derek Brown is your guy. And honestly, I wouldn't be too mad if we did those other things and took him at number three just to not risk it. Derek Brown, to me, is the best interior defensive lineman in college football. That's why he comes in at number four. He can get pressure. He can run stop. And we saw the difference that it made when Snacks Harrison came here, right? Think about it. 2018, Snacks Harrison comes in halfway through the season. We finished a top 10 defense. Defense. Stacks Harrison production goes way down in 2018. What did our defense look like? The worst in the league. Defensive tackle is so important in, in, his, in this defense in my Patricia runs. And a guy like Derrick Brown could potentially help replace that and uh, for a long time. Coming up next at number five, we have Tristan Wirfs. Maybe a surprise here. The offensive lineman out of Iowa. Now, some people are saying, why would you want to tackle? Like, come on, man. A tackle? Get out of here with that. We, we good there. We need guards. Well, Tristan Wirfs can actually play guard, and that's why he's so high on this list. Tristan Wirfs plays the right side of the O-line which is obviously our worst side of the O-line. If Graham Glasgow walks, which I think we all expect him to do, we're not going to have a right guard. Our right tackle position with Rick Wagner is pretty disgusting. And honestly, if you don't want to replace Rick Wagner, that's cool. Then Tristan Wirfs can play right guard. If you get a right guard and you want to put him at tackle and you want to replace, replace Rick Wagner, that's cool. You got Tristan Wirfs. Wirfs can do both. He's versatile in that aspect and not all other offensive linemen are. A lot of guys can say, I can play all interior line positions. I can play both tackles. Well, not, not a lot of guys. But not many players can say I can play right guard and right tackle. That's impressive, and I think that's what Tristan Wirfs would add to Detroit Lions, and that's why he comes in all the way at number five. Now, hopping at number six, we have Javon Kinlaw. Kinlaw, to me, is the second best interior defensive lineman. Not by much. Definitely fills out our biggest need once again. And this is a guy that I think you trade back for. You get something in return. You still pick him up. That would be a perfect pick for me. I think the latest he goes is 14. I don't think he falls any further than that. I think Buccaneers are kind of where it cuts off. If no one has taken him by then, the Buccaneers are going to take him, in my opinion. But I still think it would be a really good pick for the Detroit Lions. This guy has a lot of potential. He's very raw. But he did show during college a lot of ability, especially getting pressure on the quarterback out of the defense tackle position, which is not easy, by the way. That's why he comes in all the way at number six. Hopping in at number seven, we have Jedrick Wills. Okay, here's a legit tackle here. And you're like, why is there a tackle again? Well, he's the best tackle in the draft. It's that simple. If there's one player that can only play tackle, he's the best tackle in the draft to me. I, I think I, that's how I would look at it. And because of that, if you want to replace Rick Wagner, he's your guy. Hopefully I'm pointing to, he's your guy. If you don't want to replace Rick Wagner and you don't want to replace Taylor Decker, he's not your guy. So that's why he comes in number seven. How we get to number eight, we have AJ Epinesa. Again, maybe a little surprise here, but the production doesn't lie. All right. I look at players. I love the combine. I love, I love, oh, how high do you jump? You know what that technique looking like, but do you have production? That That's really what a lot of it comes down to. Do you have a lot of production? And I'll sometimes players have a lot of production because they have such great players on their team. AJ Epinesa has some solid players, but he was the best player in that front seven, all right? AJ Epinesa was the best player in that front seven last season. And because of that, AJ Epinesa has some great production that to me, I look at and I'm like, yeah, I mean, you, there's no lie there. He has production, back to back years, great production. And not only that, when you watched him at the combine, he looks so smooth. He looks so smooth going through those drills. So he has to come in all the way up here. We need edge rusher, and uh, AJ Epinesa gives us that. Hopping into number nine, we have Christian Fulton, the cornerback out of LSU. Again, cornerback here, second cornerback on the list. Well, this guy is the second best thing to me to Jeffrey Okuda. Now, I think this is perfect because if you trade back, you can get a guy like Christian Fulton. You can potentially get a guy across from Darius Slay. Now, I don't know if he could necessarily come in right away and replace him, but he would give you a sidekick to Darius Slay like we haven't had. Plays man to man, can fit the scheme. It's really what I look for. You know, I'm looking for corner. What do I look for? Can you press? Can you play man? You can do that. Boom, you're on the list. And that's what Christian Fulton does. That's why he's on the list. Hopping in at number 10 to finish out the top 10, we have Makai Becton, the offensive tackle out of Louisville. Now, if anybody watched the combine or it has been anybody paying attention to the combine, you would know that Makai Becton was freaking some people out. All right, this dude's six foot seven and he ran a five, like five one one. Are you kidding? That's faster than I run. Makai Becton is a big dude. 
He's a big dude. You want to protect Stafford, which I think should be a priority this offseason. Think about it. You won three games with him. You lost every game without him. You need to protect that guy. The Lions, you know, you know, you got to be a playoff contender. Okay, how do we do that? Let's, let's think about this for a second. Hold on. Let me get my pencil out of my... This is Matt Patricia. Okay, let's, let's break this down. We need to be a playoff contender, okay? What's a playoff contender? I don't know. Seven wins at least? Okay. With Stafford, we won three, four, and one. Okay, not bad. Without him, we went 0 and 8. Okay, protect Stafford. That's 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 all it takes. That's all it takes to know what you need to do to be a playoff contender next season. A guy like Mackay backed in on the edge. Not a lot of edge rushers are gonna mess with that. He comes in at number, I don't know, come, number 10. At number 11, we have Neville Gallimore out of Oklahoma. Neville Gallimore to me is a great defensive tackle. I think he's super underrated. And because of that, he could fall to the second round, which would obviously be perfect. But obviously, like I said, defensive tackle is our biggest need. And uh, I think Neville Gallimore might be my third favorite defensive tackle in this draft. I love Raekwon Davis. I like me some Jordan Elliott. Bra Ross Blacklock, eh. But man, Neville Gallimore is a really good player out of Oklahoma. And again, he's just filling out a need that we have. Next up, coming in number 12, we have CJ Henderson. Again, a cornerback out of Florida that can play that press man coverage. And that's exactly why he's here. He could look like a second round pick to me or a really late trade back situation. A guy like CJ Henderson would be really good across from Darius Slay. Fit the scheme really well, and at uh, some point we're gonna have to get a cornerback. So maybe CJ Henderson is that guy. Coming in number 13, we have Patrick Queen. Maybe a surprise. Some people are like, I don't like Patrick Queen. Well, stop. You sure like Patrick Queen. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you because you can play man to man coverage on a linebacker position, which not a lot of linebackers can do very well. Patrick Queen can do that. Also, he's a good inside linebacker. This could be Jared Davis's replacement. Let me just say it like that. And uh, I've been really rooting for Jared Davis. I want him to be really good. So maybe with a new linebacker coach, he will. But Hasn't been great so far, okay? He just hasn't been great so far. And, you know, last year, not a lot of help from the interior, so he didn't have any crazy numbers. Misses a lot of sacks. This guy can blitz the inside and also play man-to-man -man coverage, which, uh, to me, spells good player for the Detroit Lions. At number 14, we have Cesar Ruiz, the offensive lineman out of Michigan. And Cesar Ruiz is uh, not just because he's a Michigan player. I mean, it's a little bit like that. But mainly because Cesar Ruiz, no, I'm just kidding. Mainly because Cesar Ruiz can fill out the position of need that we're going to have when Graham Glasgow walks. I keep talking about Graham Glasgow. Why do I keep doing that? Because he's going to walk, y'all. I hate it. I hate it as much as you do. I want Graham back too. But since he's probably not going to come back, Cesar Ruiz can fix that. He can play all interior line positions. He would be a great second round pick for us. I don't think he's going to go first round, but he could because he's that talented. He's a day one starter material. And and he comes in now at number 14. I'm sorry, my back is, I need to stretch. At number 15, up next, we have Jonathan Taylor, the running back out of Wisconsin. And Jonathan Taylor is my favorite running back in draft. 6,000 yards in two seasons. Three seasons, not two. That'd be ridiculous. Then in the combine, he backs up with a 4-3-9. This guy is a... He's a workhorse, all right? You hand him the football, he's going to run for some yards, all right? Never averaged under six yards per carry in college. Never had back-to-back -back games with less than 110 yards rushing. What does that tell you? It tells you you've got a great running back on your hands. Now, you would say, well, okay, well, Detroit Lions don't need running backs. They need linemen. That's the problem. Well, statistically, that may be true, but it also may be true that that's not true statistically. What are you talking about? Well, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Well, basically, Detroit Lions ranked 11th last season with their offensive line, but yet we couldn't run the football. So what is the problem? Is it really offensive line, or is the fact that we haven't had a great running back? Well, how can we test? this hypothesis i don't know getting running back like this because look when you look at a running back position carry on he showed some glimpses his first year 5.4 yards carry i love it then he got hurt okay he'll be back next season got hurt again Right? We've seen some solid play. 4.3 yards per carry from this guy. 4.3 yards per carry from this guy. The problem is the, we have had a lot of injuries, and a guy like Jonathan Taylor could be that could be that telling tale. Maybe you bring in Taylor, and we ball out. We start running really well. It's like, oh, maybe we had the offensive lineman all along. We just never had a great running back. Or you bring him in, and he struggles, and it's like, yeah, we need to upgrade that online. I don't know. It's up to you. It could be a little risky, but I do like it in the second round. I don't think it's that risky because he can do a lot of things. Question was, can he catch the ball? He can catch the ball. Does he have top end speed? He has top end speed. Fumbles, they have been fixed when he got to the professional level, and I feel like Jonathan Taylor's going to fix that. Someone about Jonathan Taylor tells me this guy will fix it. The award winner for best running back in, the, in uh, college football a few times. And yeah, he, did, he deserves it. Next up, coming in number 16, we have Justin Matabuke. I think that's how you say his name, the defensive lineman out of Texas A&M. Now, again, biggest need, fill it out. Boom, there you go. One thing you'll see with a lot of defensive linemen, especially interior defensive linemen, you look at them and you're like, okay, let me let me look at them stats. And you're like, ah, that's not beautiful. But then you look at the size, you know, you look at the potential, you're like, okay, this guy could work. You look at Justin, you look at his stats, and you're like, wow, this guy he has proven that it does work. And, and when you see production like that, it's usually a very good sign that it's going to work. He, um, 
he, he's proven that he has done it before, and that's why he comes in so high. I think he's flying up a lot of radars all of a sudden, and uh, yeah, I think this could be a big pick for Lions. Now, coming at, at number 18 is Caleb Von Chasen. Now, you're probably like, why is Caleb Von so low? Simple, injuries. Back-to-back -back years with injuries, something I like to stay away from. Caleb Von comes in at number 18. Love him as an edge rusher, just injuries scare me. Number 19 is J.K. Dobbins, and uh, yeah, I wouldn't be mad if we took J.K. You know, some of y'all think like, oh yeah, you just want Taylor, you know, if we get J.K., that, you wouldn't be happy. I'd be so happy if we got J.K. Dobbins. I want to see a great running back here, okay? Am I wrong for you thinking that? No. J.K. Dobbins is another great running back, and he's from Ohio State, but I don't care. He's a great running back, does things that we need. He can catch the ball in the backfield. He may be even a better fit for our offense, and... And he's super fast. J.K. Dobbins comes in at number 19. But we didn't get to see him run the 40. So how do we really know? It, we know. Don't worry about it. We know. Coming to number 20 to round this thing off is Jeff Gladney, the cornerback out of TCU. He's going to he's gonna end this thing off so well because he plays man-to-man. -man. He can play press a little bit. He just fits the scheme, and that's exactly what we need. We need a guy that can play man-to-man -man corner, and that's what Jeff is going to give to you. And he comes in at number 20 and rounds off the entire big board for the Detroit Lions heading into next season. Now, this is 1.0. If you guys want to see a 2.0, make sure you let me know in the comments below. I'll probably update this all the time if you guys enjoy it. But if you did enjoy it, make sure you click the like button because that shows me you enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you do because oh, it's taking me a long time to do this. So hopefully you do. Anyways, I do appreciate all of you guys stopping in. Two honorable mentions were Zach Taylor, or Zach Bond, not Zach Taylor, Zach Bond and Xavier McKinney, the safety out of Alabama. I like both of those players, but they just weren't able to make it onto the list. So there you go. Let me your thoughts, comments below. What would you change? And uh, yeah, sorry Tua's not on here. I know there's some Tua fans that are upset. Don't worry about it. I was just going by needs, all right? Like I said before, I wouldn't hate it if we take two. I wouldn't cry, okay? I wouldn't be the most happy camper, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't cry about it. Hey, keep Stafford. You can put him behind him. I wouldn't be mad. If you think Tua's that guy, good, because... He's been a really good player. The injuries are just what scare people. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Below. I don't know why we're still here. Thank you for watching, and I'm out.